Hey y'all, today from the coop, I'm gonna share a book with y'all. It's from an author that I've shared before, Max Licato. Y'all know I absolutely love him. But um, this book was illustrated by David Wenzel and it was copyrighted in 2006. But the story is called Your Special Gift. And Rue, like I said, is my lap chicken and she's she hopped up here. I was gonna pick another chicken, but she thinks she's a superstar. Max Licato also wrote books that I've shared like You Are Special, You Are Mine, Best of All, and he's written many more that I hope to share with y'all in the future. This book is about the Weebix, and one morning they all wake up and they discover that they've all received a gift and no one knows who gave it to them. When a family of Weemix come to town for help, they're trying to find Eli. The Weemix, they try to help, but in the end, they do nothing right. With a little guidance from Eli, they quickly learn that the gifts that they received will make a difference. This story shows that God has given us all special gifts, and we just need to use them to serve Him. So, me and Rue hope that you enjoy this book. Special Gift, written by Max Licato and illustrated by David Wenzel. Punchinello stepped out of his little house, looked at the bright orange sunrise, listened to the singing birds, and smiled. What a great day, Eli, he shouted to his maker. Eli looked up and waved. His house sat on the highest hill, but not so high that he couldn't hear and see the wooden people he had made. The Weemix. Consider it a gift, my friend, he replied and entered his workshop. Punchinello noticed a bright red package in his mailbox. My, what is this? Someone bought me a present. He unwrapped it. A hammer. I love hammers. But who gave it to me? He looked up and down his street but saw no one. Not far away in another small house, Lucia, Punchinello's friend, was asking the same question. Who gave me such a nice gift? She wondered as she lifted the lid off the box she found outside her front door. A paintbrush and a palette of paint. I love to paint, but who knew? Splint and Woody lived down the road from Lucia. They found their gifts at the foot of their beds. Wow, thanks, Woody, Splint exclaimed. I didn't give it to you, Woody replied. Did you give this to me? He held up a green box with a yellow ribbon. No, but let's open our presents. Sewing stuff, Woody held up a needle and thread. I love to sew. Splint was just as excited. A guitar. I know how to play one of these. Who do you suppose bought these gifts for us? And why, Woody added. Splint and Woody weren't the only curious Weemix. Hans, the baker, announced to his wife, Look, a new spoon. Violet, the florist, found a beautiful vase on her doorstep. Even the mayor and his wife discovered gifts. Look, a bucket and a brush, the mayor beamed. I love to clean things. Why, when I was a little weemick, not me, said his wife. I don't like to clean anything. That gift must be for you. And this one must be for you, replied the mayor as he reached further into the box. A book, a storybook for weemicks. What fun, who gave us these gifts, asked his wife. I don't know, replied the mayor, looking out his second floor window to the street below. But I see some little Weemix who could use a story. The mayor and his wife looked down at a very tired Weemix family. The mother and father were leaning against the wagon. Their three children, looking cold and sad, sat in the back. By the time the mayor and his wife reached the street, other Weemix were already with the family. Punch, Lucia, 
Splint and Woody had brought their gifts to the village hoping to find their giver. But when they saw the wagon, they dropped the presents in a pile and forgot about them. What happened? Lucia asked the family. Everything has gone wrong, the father explained. Our wagon wheel broke when we crossed the bridge. When the wheel broke, the wagon tilted and our clothes fell into the river and washed away. The rain soaked our food. We are tired and hungry and dirty. Where are you going? We came from far away to see Eli, the mother answered. But I don't think we'll make it so tired and so hungry. Her voice trailed off and her head hung low. For a few moments, no one spoke. No one knew what to say. But Punchinello had an idea. He turned to his friends and announced, Hey, we can help this family to see Eli. Yeah, they agreed, and every week ran to work on the broken wheel. Splint and Woody tried to yank it off, but it wouldn't budge. Here, let me get it, demanded Hans the baker. But when he pulled, the wheel broke into two pieces. Now see what you've done, said the mayor. Let me take over. But when he lifted the wheel, it fell apart. This isn't working, Punchinello thought, but he didn't know what to do. We are so cold and hungry, the mother moaned. I have clothes, Hans yelled, running towards his house. I know how to cook, shouted the mayor's wife, which caused the mayor to look at her. I did cook, she told him, hurrying away, once, a long time ago. Well, maybe I helped someone else cook, but I can try. But she didn't know how to cook. She returned with burned bread and cold soup. And Hans brought clothes, but not clothes the family could use. They were cut to fit his short and square body. This isn't working, Punch said to himself again, but he didn't know what to do. Neither did anyone else. The family still shivered and their tummies still growled. What's worse, when the Weemicks began to argue with each other, your food's not fit to eat, Splint told the mayor's wife, and your wheel is no good for rolling, she replied. When Lucia chuckled, Splint yelled at her, and you haven't helped at all. Well, I don't know what to do. None of us do, said Punchinello. That's our problem. He flopped down on a box and plopped his chin in his hands. Something isn't right. Everyone grew quiet. You bet it's not right, Lucia, but what do we do? Punch lifted his head and smiled. I know, let's go ask Eli. Everyone liked that idea. So together, they walked up the hill to Eli's workshop. Punchinello knocked on the big wooden door. Eli opened it, wearing his apron and warm smile. Hello, friends, he sat down on the bench. How can I help you? They told him about the family of travelers. As they described the broken wheel, Eli nodded. I know. When he told their maker about the lost clothes and ruined food, he nodded again. I know. They're coming to see you, Eli, Lucia added. I know, he smiled. You know, she asked. You know about the wheel and the food and the clothing? I did. You knew they were coming to see you? He nodded again. Lucia looked at Punch. Punch looked at the others. They all looked at Eli and asked, Then why didn't you help them? I did. The Wemix were puzzled. You did? How did you help them? I sent you. Us? You. I led them through the village so you could help them. For a moment, no one spoke. Finally, Punchinello did. That's our problem. Eli, we want to help, but don't know how. The wheel is still broken, the travelers are still cold, and the food is still bad. Even the mayor's wife nodded. Sounds to me like everyone is doing something and no one is doing the right thing, Eli explained. What? Splint and Woody asked. Try this, Eli smiled. Each of you do the most what you do the best. The villagers pondered his words. 
Do the most what you do the best, Eli repeated. You have gifts, don't you? For a moment, no one spoke. Then Punchinello remembered, I do, I have a hammer. And I have a guitar, Splint piped up. Someone gave me a needle and thread, Woody added. One by one, the Wemix announced their gifts until Lucia realized, Did you give those to us, Eli? The maker nodded and smiled. Use the gifts I gave you. Don't try to use a gift you don't have. Just do the most what you do the best. Feeling much better, they returned to the village and walked straight to their piles of gifts. Punchinello took his hammer, looked at the wheel and said, I can repair the wheel with this. Splint took his needle and thread. Time for me to make some clothes. Hans the baker cooked with his spoon and the mayor cleaned the wagon with his brush and Lucia decorated it with her paint. After the baker fed the family and Splint finished sewing their clothes, the mayor's wife read stories to the children and Woody sang them songs. Not for long, however, the family was so tired that they soon fell asleep. All the Wemix agreed to meet the next morning and take the travelers to Eli. As the sun rose, a group of happy Wemix led the wagon and the travelers up the hill. The birds sang and the Wemix smiled. When they reached Eli's house, he was glad to see them. Looks like you made some progress. We sure did, Eli Punchinello smiled. Thank you for the gifts. Know anyone else who needs help? <laughs>